I'm going to open up the HF kit so you can see what I bring into the field. That's coming up on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, and today uh, we're going to take a look at my HF kit. Now, I can't believe it's been two years since I opened up this bag and, uh, and uh, s spilled out all of its contents, but um, here we are again. Uh, a lot of people keep asking me what I use uh, for transceivers, uh, other equipment, antennas. So we're going to break this down into two parts. Uh, the first part is I'm going to open up the HF kit so you can see the uh, transceiver and that it and all of those accessories and then in a follow-up video we're going to open up the antenna box and this is probably what most people want to see <laughs> what we do you know what i do antenna wise so uh, i'm just going to set the antenna box to the side and we're going to dig right into here uh for my hf kit i'm using uh this i think it's a tactical sling bag is what they call it and this bag is okay um, it's held up well. The, th the thing I really like about it is it's just the right size to hold the, the, uh, the transceiver. It's padded um, and it's got pockets. The thing I don't like about it is it's a sling bag and I've come to find, I don't know, maybe it's me getting older or something like this, but um, the sling is not very comfortable. You know, if you're going to use it for, um, you know, walk with it for an extended period of time, especially when it's full of gear. So I might be replacing this bag soon, uh, maybe something in the line of a padded backpack, like a photography backpack. Um, we'll open up the main pocket first, I guess, so you can see uh, the meat and potatoes. Uh, Transceiver-wise, of course, we use the Yaesu uh, FT891, and I keep it in this padded wrap. This is a a Domkey uh, padded wrap, uh, very popular with photographers. I found it, um, it works really well. I'm going to put links to all of these items in the video description below so you can find them. Uh, but the Yaesu FT891 is my rig of choice, uh, up to 100 watts output power, very portable, um, very nice, very nice radio transceiver. And I actually, I like that rig a lot. Um, next item is a tuner. And I always carry with me uh, uh, my little auto tuner here. This is the LDG uh, Z11 Pro 2. I also have a manual tuner, the MFJ 945 travel tuner. Uh, the big difference between the two, other than um, the um, auto tuner is, is automatic, is that uh, the travel tuner would give me the option to do any type of antenna with open wire feed line. Uh, but since most everything I'm using right now is fed with coax, that's not so much of a problem. And again, it's, I keep it in one of these foam wraps that are popular with photographers. Um, I keep a steno notepad in the, in the bag. Uh, the steno book um, is just my backup form of logging. Uh, so I've always got paper if I need to log some, you know, if, I, if, I need, if my computer dies and I need to keep logging, I can use my my steno pad for that. Uh, otherwise for logging, I have a small uh, laptop computer, tiny Windows 10 machine. I bought it like three years ago. Uh, it's got a solid state drive, Celeron processor. The battery lasts forever. So, uh, when, and it works really well with uh, the Hammer's logging application. I also carry with me my um, handy antenna analyzer. Uh, this is the uh, Stick by a Rig Expert, the Stick 230. And this is invaluable in the field. It's always good to be able to plug this in, check an antenna before you get on the air, make sure that everything's good. Um, if you're using the uh, coil type antennas like the Buddy Stick or the Wolf River Coil, uh, this makes adjusting those coils um, dirt simple, uh, really, really quick. So that's the uh, Rig Expert Stick. And that's it for the main compartment. Oh, one last thing. Well, we carry a uh, Set of headphones. Uh, this is just a cheap pair of headphones I keep in there as a, as a backup if I need headphones. Opening up the other compartments, we've got in the top one uh, more accessories, some electrical tape, a uh, box of fuses, coax for the um, uh, tuner, and I actually keep two pieces of coax in case one of them breaks. 
extra batteries, uh, some ox guard compound, uh, put that on threads or antenna connections, something like that. In this little pouch, we've got spare connectors, like barrel connectors, uh, PL259s to um, BNC connectors, uh, just those little sundry items. Little notebook again, uh, if, I, if I need to write anything down. And oh, one last item here. Uh, this is a new thing that I've, I started carrying. Uh, this is a tiny um, GPS unit that you can put into your uh, USB port. Uh, this allows you to uh, synchronize the clock on your computer. If you're using digital modes, data modes, uh, you're gonna need an accurate clock signal. And uh, you, can, you can set that using the, the GPS, this little GPS uh, dongle if you're out in the field and can't get a Wi-Fi connection. Moving on to the other pocket, this is where we keep all of um, power cables. I've got a, this is like a three foot cable uh, for, the, for the transceiver. Everything I've got has got power poles on them. Uh, the power pole connector is pretty much universal in emergency communications work, amateur radio. Uh, so it makes it real easy to kind of flip, you know, switch uh, cables and whatnot. Uh, I've got a longer, I think this is a, this might be six or 10 foot cable. I don't use this one much. I like the shorter one better. Uh, this is just a little power meter. I can see how many watt hours, how many amp hours I've consumed, uh, what my battery charge level is. It's very handy when you're out in the field so you kind of know how much battery life you've got left in your, in your power source. And then just some other, uh, an extension cable. Um, cigarette lighter adapter cable, things like that in our, in our big pouch. Moving on, uh, let's talk about the batteries. And uh, I carry two batteries. Uh, for the longest time I've been using my small um, 12 amp hour talent cell battery. Uh, works really well. I can get two, three hours on this battery, no problem, at 50 watts output power on the transceiver. So short activations, I'll usually pull this thing out. For longer activations, for a weekend camping, I wanted something that with a little bit more life to it. So I purchased this 20 amp hour. Uh, this is the EcoWorthy. Uh, again, a very inexpensive uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, I can run an entire weekend, five, six hours or so, uh, with something like this. So it's um, really nice, really nice battery. And then finally, uh, when I'm not using uh, the microphone on my transceiver, I will use the uh, headset, and that is the uh, Heil uh, BM17 uh, dual-sided headset. I also have a uh, push button here to um, uh, trigger the handset. I don't use the Vox control at all. I prefer to use a trigger switch uh, for that. Uh, this is the, um, I've got the adapter cable uh, for the 891, the modular plug on there. But I also keep in here my adapter cable for my Yaesu um, FTDX3000. So if I want to use the headset in the shack, I know, where my I know where my cable is for that. And that's, that is kind of stowed in its separate little pouch. Uh, this is a toiletry bag I found lying around that works, it fits, fits the headset perfectly. So. That's it. That is the extent of my um, HF kit. Uh, I've got a second box that I use to um, hold all of my antennas, and we're going to open that one up next. So if you want to see uh, what antennas I bring out into the field, click on the link here uh, when that becomes available. Otherwise, um, you're just going to have to wait a couple days for that video to post. But um, questions, comments, leave them in the video description, video down below. Links to all of these items are in the video description down below. And um, thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.